Dr. Abrams overseeing patient 3178 Colin Miller. Colin, thank you for speaking with me today. I just want to dive right in and get started. Are you comfortable? Comfortable. I'm in a mental institution. Colin, please address the camera for the duration of this interview. Patient 3178 suffers from multiple personality disorder, severe state of depression, and antisocial personality disorders. You make it sound so simple, don't you? Colin, this is your last opportunity to speak with me about your crimes before you're transferred to Athens Institute. They're far less accommodating over there. It doesn't matter whether I'm here or whether I'm there. I chose to be here, and I'll choose when I want to leave. You speak of me and my conditions like it's, like it's so simple. There's nothing, nothing simple about me nor my condition. Not a damn thing. All right, Colin, my apologies. Backtrack here a little bit and let's go back to the beginning. How did all of this begin? My family was a normal southern family. We were close. My dad spent his days slaving away on the farm with our neighbor, Mr. Smith. And my mom, she owned a store just a few miles up from our actual house. Me and Casey, my sister, we were inseparable. Now we were only a few ages apart. We were, we were the picture-perfect family until the darkness came. The darkness takes you, makes you do things, changes you, corrupts your soul. And once it has you, there's no escaping it. You see, my family's land was built on the burial site of Native Americans. I didn't even know that until I came upon this big rock carving. This rock carving spoke to me voices, the voices, I can still hear the voices. And from there, they never went away. Those voices, they wanted me to do one thing, kill. At first, I thought it was just all in my head, and I started to see it. To see what? The wicked one. Every time I closed my eyes, he was right there. Sitting on his throne, telling me I was weak. He told me he could make me feel strong. All I had to do was purge myself of all that I loved. And finally, I gave it to its desires. Colin? Colin. Give me a second, Doc. I figured I should start with my dad. I was sick of his tough love bullshit. Always ragging on me. Always sh shit to be done, blah, blah, blah. You know, then one day, I was tinkering around in the barn. So I took his favorite sledgehammer, and I hit him one good time across the head. He collapsed to the ground, shake it violently. I had no interest in watching him twitch. Though it was satisfying, I kept beating him. I beat him till the last breath came out of his fucking eyes. Did you feel any remorse after the murder of your father? Remorse? Nope. Not one single thing. I see. So after that, pranced on into the house. Saw mom cooking dinner, so I grabbed that kitchen knife and I stuck it right in her side. She hit me down. She ran. I think she was dumb enough to think that she could get away. She didn't make it far. She fell and she laid there. Begging, please, please help. I couldn't do it. I couldn't just stab the woman who gave birth to me. She carried me in her room for Killing your piece of shit, Dad? That's something, something else. But your mom? Holy hell. But it had to be done. It was easy, but I had to finish what I had started. <laughs> it is what it is. You should have seen her lying there. Her eyes were all bulged out like a damn insect. <laughs> That's horrific. Hey, you wanted the details, Doc. You want me to give you a moment? You can go change your underwear out. Just. 
is Casey. Uh, you see, my sister Casey, she was probably my favorite. Favorite to kill, that is. She knew something was off with me for a while. She just said one goddamn thing about it. Her own brother. It's a big no-no. I was done. I did what that demon wanted me to do. I killed them all. But that wasn't it. No. No, it wasn't. The Kaplan sisters? Oh, yeah. Give me one second. Oh. Lacey. She was my crush. I don't know, I would say since first grade. But she fucking despised me. I don't know what it was. I was nice to her. She just didn't want me near her. So I had to kill her. It's the only way I could touch her. Um, and then her little sister. Oof. She call, comes running out. See me doing what I do with her body. So I kill that little brat too. You know what's fucked up, Doc? I don't even get to finish. You look a little skirmish over there. This is what you wanted. This is the details. This is the confession of Colin. Is that case? She was seeing this real hippie ass dude. His name was Travis. Just super mouthy, super unfaithful. So when his long Willie Nelson haired ass came on board, I stabbed him right in the neck. <laughs> that little freak didn't even know what hit him. At first, I think he was just a little too hot to even know he got stabbed in the fucking neck. He had it coming to him. Should have been faithful. Loyalty is important after all. He just didn't understand that concept. I fucking hate hippies. Your neighbor, Mr. Smith, was the fourth victim? Yep, yep, yep. That old geriatric shit was checking out his craps. He didn't even know what hit him. Every time I saw these killings, I fantasized using a meat hook. So that's what I did. Gutted that fogey like a hog. Aping his son. That was a wormy little shit. So naturally, he too had to die. I cut his ass up into pieces. So, after all this is done, eight murders in total, you'd completed this supposed entity's work, then what? I returned to where it all began. I had to tell him that I did what he wanted. It touched me. I never felt more alive. It started to rain. Only that this rain it was blood. This blood cleansed me. It cleansed me of all that shit that made me weak. It was in that moment I found something pretty profound here, Doctor. And what was that exactly? The color mother was gone. I butchered my family, purged myself. Colin Miller is gone, Doctor. Only the wicked one remains. In the Carpenter Falls, the wicked one 